Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to another technical update video. It is the 25th of August, 2024. In fact, this is the last day of August because the first day of September, the first day of spring is next Sunday. And I'm really looking forward to this week. As an investor, it is the last uh, trading day or last trading week of reporting month. So we'll see many companies release their half year and full year results. So always look forward to that. Also, this week is going to be quite warm in Brisbane. Uh, I will show you one site I do look at all the time when it comes to temperatures. Uh, this is called uh, OCF, which is Operational Consensus Forecast. So this is more of a model output of consensus of all the models, many uh, meteorological models out there, uh, completely different than climatological models because it's completely different science. This is looking at weather, not climate. Uh, anyway, so all these different points we look at. Uh, so if you go to Brisbane, which is somewhere in Brisbane, I think it's uh, really in Kangaroo Point. That's where the observation uh, place is in Brisbane. It's in Kangaroo Point. Uh, anyway, temperatures for this week, starting on Monday, 31, 28, 31, 32, 32, then 34 on Saturday, and even the first day of September, 32. These temperatures aren't going to be exactly like this, but they are a reliable indication that this week, the last week of August, is going to be quite warm. Even the minimum temperatures are quite high as well, which tells me there's a fair bit of moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, so we could be seeing some humid days out there as well. Uh, and rainfall forecast, zero, so dry as well, so no for, no forecast of rain or showers or storms. Probably the one thing is missing is I love storms and we're not seeing any storms there. A little bit cooler towards the coast. If you look at Brisbane Aero, uh, that's because of the sea breeze should be coming in. And typically the sea breezes tend to be quite strong, tend to be quite stronger uh, in the uh, spring months because there's a temperature difference between the sea surface temperatures and the temperatures we get over land. And once the sea surface temperatures rise up later in the season, uh, late, late, late summer, early autumn, uh, there's a less of a temperature difference between the land and the ocean. That's what drives sea breezes. So you tend to find the strongest sea breezes when we're at the start of the season. We have those really hot days in spring. Uh, anyway, this particular video is not about meteorology. This is about uh, technicals, technical analysis, uh, charts, that sort of thing. So the plan for today's video, I'm going to go through, just like every other technical update video, I'll go through indices, uh, go through some commodities, uh, a pretty good day, I expect, for uranium lovers. The uranium company should pop up on Monday after a period of... Uh, uh, period of weakness, I suppose, in uranium, and that is uh, uh, because of um, one of the miners in Kazakhstan have uh, guidance, their, their, their production guidance has fallen short of market expectations. I'll talk about that a little bit more when we look at uranium. Uh, and then we'll have also have a look at Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, bonds, maybe also currency. And then we'll have a look at some individual companies' charts. I haven't really come to, come to a, uh, I don't, at this point, know exactly which companies I'm going to show you. But I have a feeling I might show you uh, my breakout breakout watch list. These are all the companies that are possibly breaking out, although there's about 30 here. And it's not also, it's not inclusive. This is not all the breakouts. It's just some of the companies I am uh, following. So I might show you some of these charts, but there is quite a few there. So let's go uh, and start this video looking at some indices, starting with the XJO. This is the weekly chart, and it was a pretty good week for the XJO, up about 0.7%. Not only that, if you do have a look at the close, the XJO closed at a high. If you're just looking at the weekly closes, not talking about intra-week highs and lows, we're talking about the weekly close. It closed at a weekly high. You can see a few weeks ago, the XJO did get above 8,100, um, and we're a little bit short of that. And you can just see that when we turn our attention to the daily chart, just before those two big down days on the 2nd and 5th of August, the XGO did get up to 8,150. And you also notice two big down days, that was uh, 14 or 15 and 14 training days ago. Actually, I think it's 16 and 15 training days ago. And since then, we've had, I think, 
about, if I'm looking at this correctly, 12 out of 14 days since then have been positive, only two down days. And one of those down days was the last train day of last week, the Friday, and the XJ was only down 0.04%. So again, you can see two big down days and then 12 out of 14 positive days, but still we're not yet back up to those uh, that point where we were before those two big down days. So again, that saying, we get, the market goes down the elevator, but up the stairs is absolutely true here. And also shows you that fear is much more powerful than greed. Uh, so we, I think eventually we will get above 8,150. Uh, it might be next week. It might be two weeks from now, a month, four months, six months. might be two years from now, but eventually we will get to all time highs. Probably the only thing I could be negative when it comes to the XJO, because when you do have a look at the weekly chart, it looks pretty good. The only negative thing I could say is we are near the top of the trading channel. So if we are near the top of the trading channel, it just means there's a probability, a higher chance that we're going to see some downside moving forward. Now, there is a chance that the XGO just might grind higher from here. Not only the XGO, the XAO, maybe even the XSO. There is a chance it just might, might grind higher from here. But there's also the chance we are going to see some downside. There is that chance because we're near the top of the trading channel. If we're near the bottom of the trading channel, I'd be very bullish at that point. Uh, but I'm not selling anything. I'm not rushing to exit because I don't see any evidence uh, that we're going to see significant weakness from here. But all it could take is just some more weak economic data from the United States that could turn me a little bit more bearish than I am right now. But don't forget, I tend to be, overall, I tend to be bullish. Uh, but my bullishness can increase or decrease based off economic data that flows through from not only the United States, but also Australia, from Europe, from all around the world. So right now, I am not as bullish as I can be, but definitely not bearish. Just because, look in the chart, it looks pretty good at this point in time. Uh, don't have to look at the XAO. It looks pretty similar than the XGO. Uh, XSO, which can look a little bit different. This is a small cap ordinaries. Uh, so this is sort of a proxy for the small caps. Well, it's not a proxy. It is a proxy for the small caps. Uh, probably my only issue with the small ordinaries is the makeup of this particular index. There's quite a few companies in this that I don't consider small caps. It's not my definition of small caps. And this is a little bit weaker uh, than the XJO, which is understandable. Uh, and if you do have a look at the daily chart here, uh, in, instead of being down slightly on Friday, the XSO did, have, did show or reveal a little bit more weakness than the XJO. In fact, it was down zero. 0.71%. Uh, so again, well off from the all-time highs. Uh, the XSO all-time high was still is still back in 2008, and the XSO will have to rally significant to get back up to those levels. Okay, so that's all I really have for the Australian markets. Nothing uh, to be concerned about or wary at all right now. Let's turn our attention to United States, and we'll start off with the Nasdaq. Uh, is this our favorite indice? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it's a beautiful chart. I don't know why I've got this purple box here. Let's get rid of that purple box. Uh, there's nothing to complain about. Uh, it's, it's, an up, it's still an uptrend. My only, only thing I'd like to point out here when we look at the daily chart, the only thing I want to point out is we need, or the NASDAQ needs to get it back up above 20,800. These highs we saw back in July, it needs to get back above that for me to say and confirm that the uptrend is still in place. So it's got a little bit of work to do to get up back up to those levels. I'm not concerned it won't, but I say we need to see a new high for the uptrend to be confirmed because that's the definition, definition of uptrend. We continually see our new highs being formed. Uh, the new high could take a while, just like we saw back between July and November of last year, it took about four or five months to get up back up to the new high. So it might take a while, but still pretty bullish when it comes to the NASDAQ. In fact, the NASDAQ has been an uptrend since March 2023. Uh, nothing to complain about with the NASDAQ, and it's uh, bounced off uh, a nice little support area, area as well. Uh, Dow Jones, I was going to say, this is near the all-time high. So this looks a little bit better than the NASDAQ, but it's right on at 40,200. 40, it's right on the highs we have seen two times before. 
so we did, got up, or the Dow Jones got up to 41,200 back in uh, mid July and also late July before that big collapse. And it's right there now. Uh, I'd like to see the Dow Jones get well above this because this could be an interesting uh, resistance zone for the Dow Jones. Uh, but still, it looks pretty good. No complaints when it comes to the Dow Jones. Even the weekly chart looks pretty good. In fact, this is a beautiful looking chart when you look at the Dow Jones. In fact, if you look at the weekly chart, it's been an uptrend since Dow Jones has been an uptrend since November 2010. Uh, yes, November 2010. It's probably the same for the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ has been in a weekly uptrend since January 2010. And if you bought on that day at about 2000, it's a bit 10 bagger since then. Yes, the NASDAQ has gone up tenfold since 2010. Just can't believe that. Insane. Okay, so let's turn attention. Actually, yeah, don't have to look at the S&P 500, but I will have a look at the Russell 3000 or Russell 2000 because I just noticed it was up 3.2% for the last day of the trading week. So we should have a pretty good day on the Australian markets because of what happened on the American markets on the Friday session. So let's have turn our attention to turn our attention to the Russell 2000. Does this mean the XSO will have a good day? Don't know. Uh, and in fact, the Russell 2000 has had three really good days in a row after a pretty big down day, down at 6.7%. Well, that's the weekly chart. So it's had three really good weeks in a row after that really big down week. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't say the three weeks ago was good. It was sort of flat, um, but two really good weeks in a row. If you have a look at the daily chart, they're a really good day. It's getting, it's getting close to where we were or the Russell 2000 was. Uh, before that big down period. And also, remember that was that big rotation from the MAG7 into small caps. Uh, and we're almost, the Russell 2000 is almost back up to those levels. So this is much better looking chart than the XSO, but maybe not as good as the Dow Jones and the, and the NASDAQ, but has a potential to be just as good as those two. So again, I still think, just my opinion, uh, at, the, at this point in time, uh, it's better to be invested in the United States. Yeah. Although you could say maybe valuation matters here as well. I'm not taking into account valuation. I'm just looking at charts. And over the last, yeah, 14 years, it's probably, you. in fact, let's have a look at the XGO and let's have a look at the weekly chart. So remember the NASDAQ has gone up tenfold since 2010 and the XGO since 2010 has gone from 4,800 to 8,023. So it hasn't even doubled. Uh, so NASDAQ has gone up tenfold. Uh, XGO has barely doubled. The whole reason behind that is the makeup of the companies in each indice. Uh, on the XGO, we have many companies who just don't grow. We're talking about the banks. Just don't grow. Woolworths grows very slowly. But the companies that make up the NASDAQ, they are growth companies. They are, are significantly bigger than they were in 2010. So it's all about the makeup of companies within the index. Okay, so let's turn our attention to some of the international indices. We'll start off with the Nikkei. Not sure which one to look at. This is the Nikkei 225. We also have another Nikkei, the Japan 225. Not sure which one is the one to look at. They are fairly similar, uh, but a little bit different. So I don't think it really matters which one you look at. So that is the weekly chart for the Nikkei. So let's have, turn our attention to the daily chart. And we can see... The Nikkei has recovered fairly well since that, uh, what was it called? The um, yen carry trade. It has recovered really well. In fact, since the bottom, it's gone up 7 out of 31 times that by 3. It's gone about 23 to 24% since that bottom, which was would have been on the Monday, the 5th of August. So the Nikkei has recovered. Um, if you look at holistically or overall or generally, uh, look at the weekly chart here. It's still in an uptrend. In fact, let's have a look at the Nikkei 225. When did this break out? This one broke out. Oh, it's a beautiful breakout too. This one, um, the trend and sentiment changed in March 2013. And it's a beautiful shift. Perfect shift. In fact, let's turn attention to the SGO because I didn't show you the SGO when this one broke out. Yeah, it was uh, 2013 because it was really going sideways since then. Uh, from the GFC through to 2013, but it really turned uh, in 2013. There's been some weakness since then. See a little bit of weakness in 2016, even during uh, the COVID 
19 period, there's a little bit of weakness there, but it did not turn down in either of those periods. Looking at the weekly chart. Okay, uh, other indices, let's have a look at the DAX. Uh, this one turned positive back in 2010, and this one looks pretty good as well, weekly chart. In fact, the DAX is getting up to all-time highs as well, getting very close. A nice recovery with the DAX. Uh, this one has to get above 18,800. Uh, the FTSE. FTSE, uh, it's not quite as good as a DAX, but near all-time highs as well. It's been going sideways for a while, though. And this indice is nowhere near as bullish as the other ones. This is a FTSE 100, uh, so nowhere near as bullish. In fact, since 2015, this has been going since 2015, uh, not much increase. Um, I'd say it's probably the makeup of the FTSE as well. Uh, there's probably less growth company, of, by far less growth companies in the FTSE than the NASDAQ. Uh, what else do we have here? Hang Seng? Hang Seng? I'm a big mutt with Hang Seng. Uh, Alibaba, I think, did well. Alibaba? Alibaba? Alibaba. It's easy to spell. Did it do well? Well, for some reason, Alibaba, maybe I'm thinking of Mercado Libre. Now, Alibaba starts is starting to look uh, or interesting right now. Starting to look interesting. Uh, probably the most interesting it's looked for a while. Yeah, this recovery here was just too uh, quick. Was always going to see um, a bit of volatility after that. But I think just by looking at this broader Alibaba chart, Alibaba is looking really interesting. I've got another UK FTSE. Yeah, this is a FTSE 100. This goes back uh, probably a little bit further than the other FTSE I've got. Yeah, this one. I'm not sure why I have these two. So I might put this instead of the UK 100 because this goes back a little bit further. But again, when you look at the weekly chart for this, uh, overall it's been going up, but uh, not as clean as some of those other uh, indices like the in fact, it hasn't gone up much at all. If you think about, um, if you go to 2010, it's gone from 5,200 to 8,327. So uh, English people, if there are any English people watching this, probably, again, it's best to have been invested in the um, American tech companies since 2010. But again, that's fine side. Okay, so let's have a look at some commodities. And we'll start off with gold. Uh so I do have two gold companies in my portfolio, and I have been thinking about increasing that to three, but my two gold companies are doing fairly well. So a larger coal company, and also, which is West African Resources, and a smaller one called Auric Mining. And Auric Mining is almost doubled since I bought. Uh, I have been thinking, oh, maybe I should add to that. And I went through all the gold companies charts, and there's quite a few potential charts I do like when it comes to gold companies on the ASX. And the chart, the daily chart looks brilliant. I this is a nice looking chart for gold. A really nice looking chart. There's no, no reason to be um, negative about gold right now. It's near all time highs. Uh, if you look at the weekly chart, in fact, I'd say, yeah, it got to all time high during the week. Uh, the weekly chart looks pretty good. In fact, it moved to an uptrend back in March 2019, and you've done fairly well since then. In fact, gold has almost doubled since then. Uh, so, any complaints? No complaints. Uh, gold companies, I was thinking about buying. Let's have a look at the gold, my gold watch list. Uh, so some of the ones I could have was thinking about, maybe not evolution. I don't think that popped up. Oh, no, that did pop up. That did definitely popped up. Yeah, evolution, because it's broken out. This one's broken out. Uh, Northern Star doesn't look as good as evolution, but it's in a nice uptrend. Uh, definitely not red. Remelius looks okay. Uh, Regis, no. Resolute, yeah, Resolute looks pretty good. What else? West African, I do own that. Auric Mining. Capricorn looks pretty good as well. Uh, I'm going to miss some. Orobana looks good. Oh, there's quite a few here. Uh, Emerald Resources looks good. Oh, I'm going to miss some here. Spartan Resources looks good. There's Auric Mining. That looks pretty good. Uh, don't think Degray. I did, don't remember thinking Degray. No, Degray, no. Uh, BGL or Bellevue Gold. Uh, because I did a cup raising, I was thinking, oh, is this an opportunity for Bellevue Gold? A uh, Pantoro. Yeah, there's many opportunities when it comes to gold companies on the ASX right now. And I was just thinking maybe I should increase my exposure because it is still looking quite bullish. Quite good. It's looking good. No complaints. Okay, uh, we'll have a look at 
Copper, yes. We'll look at copper. I don't know why I've got Bitcoin and Ethereum right there. So I'm going to move that. Uh, copper, uh, not as not as bullish as gold. Pretty good day on Friday, though. Copper was up uh, 1.2%. For the week, copper was up 1.4%. Uh, is this the end of the downturn or the downtrend for copper? I don't know. I wouldn't call that just yet. Uh, this could be a bit of a dead cat bounce. You can see very low volume, comparatively speaking, with copper uh, during this bounce, which is not a good sign. So I do own one copper company, that's Hillgrove Resources, uh, and that's it. So uh, that's my only exposure to copper right now. Uh, nickel, I don't know why nickel's there, but uh, let's move on to oil. Oil, oh, it's had a good week. Well, and actually, that's a good day, not a good week. A good day, it's bounced up 2.73% on the Friday. Uh, there was an oil, I did see footage of uh, Hamas, was it Hamas or no, it was Yemen. Yemen attacking an oil tanker in somewhere around there and it blew up. Um, I didn't see it, off. I didn't see a lot of it, uh, oil tanker blowing up, oil tanker blowing up, blowing up, uh, da, da, da. Yemen's Houthis released video showing explosions on oil, maybe that's 14 hours ago, Sky News. Uh, yeah, not sure how... Yeah, the, I didn't see much footage of this. In fact, I saw this yesterday, and all these news footages are like eight hours ago, 11 hours ago. So maybe I was first to the news on this. Go Twitter. So I was all on Twitter. And I, uh, then I went to the news sites, and there was nothing in the news sites. I was like, oh, maybe this is not real. I don't know. But, yeah, there's a few stories about this uh, going around. Uh, maybe, but that was on, that big down day was on, or big up day in oil was on Friday. And I'm pretty sure that was before this happened. You know, uh, maybe it was just a bounce because it is at a support level. Uh, I do have one oil company and that's Brookside. That's just a value play. I think there's a lot of value in that company. But otherwise, I'm staying clear of other oil companies like Karoon, Woodside. Still a lot of talk about Woodside, uh, even Santos. I believe Santos had a pretty down week. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, down week, definitely down. If you look at the weekly chart for Santos, it was down, down 5.6%. Even Woodside, it doesn't look that exciting, to be honest, uh, and down a little bit. And the daily chart is still in the downtrend. But these companies should have a good day on Monday. I'll just say should. Uh, Silver. Silver had a good day as well, and uh, looks like it's had a nice little bounce, but doesn't look as strong as gold. So I prefer to be in gold right now just based off the chart, but maybe there's a bit of a discrepancy between gold and silver, and silver will catch up. Uh, but the only problem with silver is there is a dearth of silver companies on the ASX. We have uh, Adriatic Metals, which has it's a lot of, it's a lot of volatility with this company, I've noticed. A lot of volatility. Uh, we have Silver Mines. SVL, this had, has had problems. Yep, big down day. And as the one viewer of this channel just keeps on telling me, Andean Silver, which is, I um, uh, forget, ASL. Now, the reason I know it's ASL is because Oz Drill used to be called, uh, Oz Drill used to have a T code ASL. But then they changed the name to uh, Peregrine, whatever. Uh, and um, Andean Silver took their Seeker code and this actually looks sharp, looks pretty good. Uh, what about coal? Coal, I think it's breaking out. I have noticed a fair bit of weakness in coal companies during the week. So we're talking about Yang Coal. Uh, of course, they suspended their dividend and the market didn't like that. Even Whitehaven Coal had a bit of weakness. They released their results and the share price has fallen. And when you look at this chart, nothing to be excited about. New Hope. And this chart doesn't look exciting as well. So the, the commodity itself looks much more intriguing than the individual companies. That's only three, but it does look a little bit more exciting than the individual companies. Natural gas up 6%. Where is natural gas? Oh, it was a big down day and they just recovered the next day. And what else do we have here? We have tin. And... But that's about it. Palladium. Oh, iron ore. Why? I've completely missed iron ore. 
let's have a look at iron ore. Uh, ridiculous that I completely missed iron ore because uh, there has been a bit of a chatter uh, in the news about how you know, uh, the, the decreasing iron ore prices is going to affect this country, and it will. And iron ore right now is in a downer trend. Uh, so it looks really weak. And you can see that definitely when you look at individual companies' charts. Uh, for instance, BHP looks weak. Looks pretty weak. Uh, Fortescue looks weak. Actually, let's go through my iron ore. I've got an iron ore watch list. Yep, BHP looks weak. Rio Tinto looks weak. Fortescue looks weak. Range Resources looks weak. Mount Gibson looks weak. And even Phoenix, which I do like, has fallen a fair bit from its highs from $44 down to 30 cents. No, 44 cents to 30 cents. Uh, that's a fairly significant drop in a fairly short period of time. So a fair bit of weakness in iron ore. But is iron ore getting to the point where there's not much more downside? That's a big question. And it, this is exactly what I look for when it comes to resource or mining. Um, or, re or commodities, I'm looking for the bottom because uh, it's still 9780. And if you look at the weekly chart for iron ore, it can go a lot lower than this. It went lower than this in 2022. In fact, it went to $80 uh, back in 2019, it went as low as $80. Back in 2016, it went as low as $40. Yeah, blow the forty dollars for a little period. That was a time to be excited about iron ore companies. So there is potentially more downside for iron ore. I just don't know. So maybe now is not the time to think about buying iron ore companies. Uh, what else? Maybe cocoa. I've got one more. That's uranium. Cocoa looks okay, and uranium. So uranium. This is the Sprott Physical Uranium up four point eight percent on a Friday. Uh, still in the downtrend. This is not conf confirmation that the downtrend has come to an end, but this is all about uh, uh, the, the mine. What's it called? Kazam Tomprom. I'm pretty sure they're in Kazakhstan. Uh, they uh, released production guidance and it fell short of market expectations. And that's why there might be a little bit of bullishness in iron, or not your iron ore, in uranium companies on the ASX on Monday. I'd say, yeah, I would expect some of the uranium companies to possibly pop up by about 10%, uh, maybe even higher than that. Um, but this is the problem when it comes to mining companies. All it takes, all it needs is a favorable or a non-favorable uh, release like this from a major miner to uh, lead to uh, changes in sentiment, instant changes in sentiment on companies, on the ASX. And I just don't like that lack of control mining companies have. You're relying on other mining companies. You're relying on the underlying uh, price of the commodity. Uh, so I'd like when it comes to mining companies and when I buy mining companies to be in a position where the probability of uh, the price going up is in my favor. Like gold is in an uptrend. When it comes to uranium, we saw a uranium company not long ago release a favorable outlook. Uh, this one is an unfavorable, which is going to be beneficial for other uranium companies. So it could change next week. Uh, anyway, so, so have a look at this mining.com article if you're into uranium. And that's it. Let's have a look at Bitcoin bonds, that sort of thing. We'll start off with Bitcoin. And of course, Bitcoin is traded and also you other cryptos are traded 24 7 and bitcoin had a really good day on friday was it friday yeah friday up 6.13 percent fairly flat on saturday and up a little bit today but again bitcoin's in this trading trading range between 56,000 and 74,000. uh it did try to fall below 56,000, but it was only below for about four days i really want to see bitcoin get above 70 4,000. But this is very healthy that it's been going sideways for about six months. Yes, six months be going sideways. So I'm neither bullish nor bullish when it comes, neither bearish nor bullish when it comes to Bitcoin right now. Ethereum, probably a little bit more bearish when it comes to this particular, particular uh, cryptocurrency uh, because it did fall through uh, a support level 
and it fell through that on the 4th of August. It's trying to get it back up above that uh, particular level, but it's failed to do so uh, just now. Although you could say, if I was becoming more bullish on a Bitcoin, that should translate to other cryptocurrencies. Maybe. I'm not sure how it works, but Ethereum does look a little bit more bearish than Bitcoin. Uh, let's have a look at bonds. I assume bonds are still in down trends. Yes. Uh, this is the bonds, uh, 30 year bonds, American bonds. It's in a downtrend. So this looks pretty weak, which is good. This may, well, it's good depending on your point of view. So again, uh, yields, so bond yields and bond prices are inverse related. So that means bond prices are starting to increase. They're moving into up trends. Uh, and also, this could be beneficial to equity markets because this is saying that interest rates are going to drop. That could be beneficial. It may not be. It all depends on why uh, interest rates are dropping. If it's because uh, weak economic news, companies or countries are moving to recessions, that's got not good news. In fact, it's negative news for equity markets. But if it's like, sort of like a soft landing, there's no issues with the economies and they're able to lower interest rates, that's actually really good news for equity markets. So it's all the reason, it's all you know, how bullish or bearish it is for equity markets when it comes to interest rates decreasing. It's all based off why. Why are they dropping? And what else? Don't have to have don't no don't need to look at uh, Australian bonds. So we'll have a look at the currency. And ooh, Australian dollar looks like it's going to break out up on Friday, up one point three three percent. I have a feeling that's because of some uh, the Fed had a had a bit of a what do you call it um thing in that place in Wyoming. Oh, I just want to call it yellow jacket. Um, Fed Powell, Fed Powell, Wyoming. What's it called? Uh, Jackson Hole. That's it. Uh, so he gave a speech at Jackson Hole, and I think what they're now. I haven't actually haven't even read about it, but what I'm thinking, because the Australian dollar did sort of rally uh, on his speech, so. I think there's a now greater chance the uh, the interest rates will decrease in United States, and uh, if Australia doesn't decrease the interest rates, that makes the Australian dollar more attractive. Hence, why there was a bit of a rally in Australian dollar on Friday. So, pretty big rally over the past few weeks since the fifth of August. It's gone from sixty three and a half cents to almost sixty eight cents. All right, so that's all I got for uh, commodities, indices, Bitcoin, bonds, and currency. Let's have a look at individual companies' charts. So I'm going to have a look at the breakouts. Um, so I've got Transurban here. So this is not, this is just a potential breakout. It's getting to a three-month high, at least a three-month high. Uh, not the sort of company I'm that excited about, but it is potential. It's showing potential, sort of like Telstra is showing potential here. Share price is now at it's at a six-month high for Telstra. And the fact, the chart looks pretty good. We've also got a crossover. So that's another reason. So that's a crossover between the 20 and 100-day moving average. I do prefer the 25-day and 100-day moving average, but this is a crossover. So pretty bullish, a little bit more bullish on Telstra. A company called AP. I'm not sure why I put this here. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you can see a bit of um, a consolidation period. And I think I put this on the list because if the share price gets above 40 cents, it's going to break out. So this is just more about the potential of a breakout. So I'm not sure if this uh, belongs on this list. Uh, Prime Financial Group. Uh, they did release their results and share price popped up uh, up to 23 cents. Um, it's about a five-month high. So you can see some pretty good volume coming in the last few trading days. So this is, again, another potential breakout. Harvey Norman, not exactly a breakout for this one, but the chart looks interesting for Harvey Norman. Uh, not far off the long-term highs uh, we saw back in March. So we're talking about five-month high for that company. Uh, Universal Stores, I think this is more of a definition of a breakout. Company releases some good financial news, their results. Share price popped up and share price is at a long-term high. In fact, it could be maybe not an all-time high, but still getting, or oh, nowhere near an all-time high. But definitely, when you look at the daily chart, this is almost the definition of a breakout I'm looking for. Uh, Charter Hall, long, Charter Hall, long whale riot. 
Uh, not quite a breakout, but uh, because there's, they might have released their results not that long ago. Maybe it was on the 9th of August, but the chart is starting to look a little bit more interesting. I would really like it if this particular REIT got above $3.85 because that is a fairly significant resistance level for this company. Uh, Charter Hall Group, this is a breakout. Company released their results. Share price popped up, up to about $14. In the last two trading days, share price has continued that momentum. So a nice looking chart for Charter Hall, uh, but not the sort of company I would like to invest in, even trade, but maybe I shouldn't be so biased. Uh, um, service stream. Uh, this is not. Share price was only already in an uptrend. So if you go back to Charter Hall, there was no real uptrend here. Share price not doing anything, and then the share price popped up. That is my definition of a breakout. Uh, when the share price really doing nothing, the share price just pops up. I like those sort of breakouts. When you look at service stream, share price was already in uptrend. So when they release their results, it's sort of like confirmation. Share price popped up confirmation that the share price sh probably should be an uptrend and uh yeah i you can't complain about this but not necessarily a breakout a continuation of the uptrend uh if i had to name it anything iph i think this has the potential to be a breakout not quite there yet for me i do they did a couple raising so they probably did a couple raising for a reason and the market liked it, some good volume coming in. But again, it needs to get up, back above those highs in June uh, for me to actually call this a breakout. So I think this, again, is potentially breaking out, sort of like APM uh, Hannibal Health, whatever that was called. High pages, release results. And this is, again, share price not doing anything for about six months, and all of a sudden, company releases some results, share price pops up. So this is more of a breakout. But he could also argue share price was in an uptrend and then we set a consolidation period and this is a continuation of the uptrend. McMahon Holdings, again, just like Service Stream, uptrend. So ideally, what I like to do with these companies is I like to find the uptrend first. So with Service Stream, I did take a trading position in this company uh, quite a, you know, maybe over a year ago. I did take profits. That's when I like to discover these companies, not when they release results to confirm why the market is being bullish. Sort of the same thing with Mark McMahon. The share price moved into uptrend back in August, a fairly slow developing uptrend, but a nice looking chart. And the results sort of confirmed why the market was a little bit more bullish about this company. So a sort of continuation of the uptrend. A seven group hold oh i can see why yeah uptrend looked like there was a little bit of weakness for this company share price looked like it was trying to move into a downtrend share price broke out above that downtrend line on results and i think this company's chart it looks like it wants to move back into an uptrend so i would probably not call this a break out i'd call this a continuation of the uptrend after it started to look it started to look a little bit more bearish so I'd say this might, um, if anyone who's holding this company, if they had some fears about the chart, I would think those fears are now, uh, uh, what's the word, have now uh, dissipated or dissipating a little bit more. Intertech pivot, this one's looking interesting. So this, uh, I mentioned uh, when we're looking at McMahon service stream, I prefer to find those charts when the share price is breaking out even if the company hasn't released any uh, financial news. This reminds me of those sort of breakouts. Share price in a downtrend. Share price trying to move into an uptrend. You can see quite a few of the moving average profit crossovers, in fact, four. So we are seeing a bit of indecision, and that's a sign of a consolidation period. And I just think, and this could happen if the company releases results. I'm not sure if the company has released results yet. Let's have a look, IPO. Let the sign in. IPL has a company released any results? Can't remember. No. When do they release the results? Do they release the results on a normal cycle? No, they release results in May and November. Okay, so this could be a sign market is expecting some good results from the company if the share price of this company moves into uptrend. So this is looking promising. Insatech P. 
pivot. Aurora. Oh, yeah, this one, yeah, this one has broken out. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good, but I don't know. I don't know. There's something about this that I'm uh, just not sure. I'm not sure what it is, but it's just my feeling. Intuition. Uh, not, I'm not quite there with Aurora just yet. Unlike Coden, looks pretty good. So just like Service Stream, uh, McMahon, uh, this company had moved into an uptrend a long time ago. In fact, the time to buy this company was uh, early 2023. Uh, and since then, it's been an uptrend. We've had a couple of breakouts. You could have said on the release of the February results, 21st of February, that was a breakout. Share price on that day rose 16.6%. And the share price hasn't been lower since the end of closing on that day. So that was a real good uh, breakout, I think. That was the, the breakout. Uh, that's when I should have uh, taken position in Coden. And in fact, it's almost 50% higher since then. Uh, Wise Tech. Say what you will about the valuation of this company, just like ProMedicus. But this is uh, also a potential breakout sign. Would I take a trading position in Wise Tech right now if I wasn't a holder? Probably not because of valuation. I just would be fearful that there's not much multiple expansion that is possible for this company at a P ratio of 200, is it 200, 150, 152. Helios, I do like this one, Helios. So I, this one had come out to my radar because it looked like the downtrend was coming to an end and there was no signal up until the company released their results on the 21st of August, share price up 12.9%. And then the two trading days after that on the Thursday and Friday, we didn't see much selling, share price went sideways. I think this could be, a really good uh, breakout. I am actually possibly going to take a position in Helios. The other thing about Helios, and I'm not sure, yes, I have included Australian Clinical Labs, Australian Clinical Labs just behind it. Uh, this looks interesting as well. And there is potential that Australian Clinical Labs is running, share price has run, because of Helios. They're in the same sector, the same, they do the same thing. Um, so Helios, Australian Clinical Labs, what's the other one? Sonic Healthcare. Uh, Sonic Healthcare didn't pop up, but this is uh, has the potential to start looking interesting soon, but not quite there. Uh, I'm probably more bullish on Helios uh, just because they have released the results. And I think the market is sort of pricing Australian clinical labs up higher because of Helios. Uh, but he, uh, both look pretty good or well, starting to look better, but I do like Helios. Endeavor. So I poo-pooed Endeavor for the longest time, uh, but I can't discount the chart. This chart is starting to look a little bit more interesting. Um, so I think there is a potential turnaround or, or shift in sentiment and change in trend for Endeavor Group. Can't say anything negative about Fedition. So I do own this. I've held this for a long time. I haven't traded it. Uh, this is fairly similar than Coden. The breakout actually happened in February when they released their results on that month. A beautiful breakout. In fact, this was perfect. Beautiful breakout. There was a resistance zone right here, a downtrend, downtrend starting to turn just before they released the results. They released the results, share price popped up, and you've probably done fairly well if you bought on that breakout. And again, they released the results in February, in March, on August, and share price has popped up again. So pretty look, good looking chart for Fidu should. But again, not exactly a breakout because the share price was only an uptrend, but I would, would have called their breakout in February, I would have called that a breakout in February. In fact, we had a the moving average crossover aligning with that breakout. Beautiful looking chart for Fiducian. But oh, maybe not the best looking chart, but still pretty good. But I am shareholder, so I'm a little bit biased. Hum grew. This is an interesting one. I am not trading this. I, I don't think I would. Um, I haven't had a look at their results. Someone did mention the results weren't that good. I just think it's just there was so much negative sentiment in the company that a little bit of positiveness would try to drive the share price higher. But I noticed the share price really struggled to get above 72 cents, which was the highs we saw, this company saw back in February. And yeah, so there is a resistance area right on 72 cents. So if the share price gets above 72 cents, that could be interesting for HUM. Uh, and my financial, this is another interesting one. I actually do like this one. I'm going to write it down. The ones I do like. This is an interesting one. Um, so in February, they released results. Market hated it. Share price dropped a lot. 
company released results in August. Market liked it a lot. Oh, gee, it only took six months for the sentiment in this company to change. Uh, I probably may not buy on Monday. I just want to see how the market or how their share price goes in the next few days because the share price was in a downtrend. So is this a shift in sentiment? Is this a shift in the trend in the share price? Wouldn't be surprised to see the share price drop a little bit from here. But if it just doesn't drop, if the share price even goes sideways or even higher, that could be a good sign for MA Financial. And again, just like uh, Hum, I have not looked at these results. In fact, for many of these companies, I have not looked at the results. I'm just looking at the market reaction to their results. Uh, an interesting one is Solvar Limited. This one popped up on my list just before the company released their results. It looked like the share price was trying to turn higher, turn, the trend was trying to change, sentiment was shifting. Uh, the day they released the results, share price dropped 7%. Uh, share price went down to $1.08. So there was a bit of selling. Then the next day, share price rallied 8.8%. So uh, I don't know if it's a delayed reaction, if those who'd sold on the Tuesday when they released the results overreacted. And then when the analysis had a closer look at the results, they went, oh, these results aren't that bad. They're quite good. And then the next two days after that uh, update, share price went sideways. This chart looks actually intriguing to me. I'm going to put that down as well. Sol Var used to be called Money Three, uh, and this sector is looking way more interesting. So Money Me, Sol Var, a few companies not so good, but a uh, few companies are looking more interesting. Judo Capital, this is one I did take a trading position in. Uh, share price popped up. You could say the breakout happened, uh, and I did take a trading position in Judo back in January, I think, on a potential breakout. And this share price went sideways, so I took. I took profits when the share price went going sideways. Uh, you can see it here. And this is my favorite type of breakout, share price going sideways. There's a bit of indecision in the market. Not sure if uh, we're bullish or bearish on this company. And when the company released the results, the bulls won. The bears got beaten. Uh, and share price broke out on that day, the 20th of August. Share price up 10.5% on that day. And then on Friday session, share price rallied another 6.2%. Exactly what I want to see. So I took a trading position on Judo capital uh talking about solver here's money me this is exactly my favorite type of trade the company share price struggles to get above 10 cents it's been struggling for maybe a year not quite a year nine months we'll say and finally it got above 10 cents but the main thing and one of the reasons it got above 10 cents was some good news from the company if i remember correctly money me a trading update on the 1st of August. On that particular day, the share price, uh, there it is, the share price of Money Me uh, rallied uh, almost 10%, 9%. Share price closed at 8.4 cents. The next day, the share price went up to 1 or 10 cents, up another 15.5%. But again, 10 cents was a natural, um, not only a natural, it is a resistance area for this company. So of course, the next few days, share price tumbled all the way back down to 8 cents. Uh, not a lot of selling during that period. And then the share price took a turn upwards, tried to get above 10 cents again on the 19th of August, failed. And then on the 20th of August, it got above 10 cents, up 10.5% on that day. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And then the next day, it tried to drop below 10 cents, but there was enough buying, enough support at 10 cents that I was convinced that 10 cents had now turned from resistance to support. And then the next day on the Thursday, share price went up 25%. And at the end of the trading week, closed at 12 and a half cents. This is a good looking chart, a potential breakout. Not a potential breakout, I'm calling it, it is breaking out. Doesn't mean it will stay above uh, 10 cents. Who knows what's gonna happen. I assume they're gonna release the results and maybe the results will disappoint. So they're releasing the results on, I assume the 28th or 29th, on the 29th of August. So it's going to be interesting to see how the market reacts. Maybe the market's got this one completely wrong, but this is a good sign. So I took a trading position in this company at 10 cents. Yes, I bought at 10 cents. So I was sort of, uh, I let my intuition take hold and say, well, share price, when I put in the bid at 10 cents, the share price was 10 and a half cents. And I just assumed that there will be some selling coming in. Uh, someone will want to sell at 10 cents. And it did. They took my bid at 10 cents. And then it was the next day or two days later, share price rallied 25%. Um, but that was an initial position. 
if I am more confident that this uptrend has been confirmed, maybe when they release their results, I'll take another trading position. I'll increase my holding in this company. So this chart looks pretty good. And again, the other thing I should note, if you listen to Osby's Accord, and if this company is ever, if this company comes up, the analysts will hate this company. No, 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 no. This company is terrible, horrible company. Uh, but again, one of the benefits we have is we can get in earlier than all those analysis. And maybe in six months time, the analysis will be all on this saying, this is a great uh, investment. Share price of this company could be 40 cents, 50 cents, who knows? Um, but one thing I've noticed, analysis and fund managers sometimes can be quite later to the party than you. It's one benefit you have. Can't, I can't uh, not include uh, Brambles. Uh, this is sort of layered. This is a breakout. Share price not doing much before this. The rest of the results and share price just popped up. I have not had a look at the results, but the market liked it. So that's Brambles. Cedar Woods, not my favorite type of company, but again, breakout. Share price popped up. Whether it continues, I don't know. Uh, probably not my sort of company. So I'm going to say clear of Cedar Woods. And Serve Corp. So this was another sort of chart similar than Service Stream, McMahon, share price already in uptrend. The breakout of this company happened back in November, probably the AGM. Share price on this day uh, increased 12.9%. Share price went sideways for like three months. And this is a beautiful looking chart. So have a look at this chart. You can learn a lot from a Serve Corp. And I think that's it. Yes, yeah, so that's not inclusive. There's probably a few more breakouts. I've not uh, included in these lists. High page, you know, looked at high pages. So I've got points bet. Points bet. Data three failed. That was a breakout. That failed. So that this is a potential breakout. Let's have a look at data three. Potential breakout when they release results on Wednesday, 21st of August. Share price rose 6.3% on that day, but the next day share price dropped 9.9%. So this failed. Potential breakout. And Nuix, I have not included in this list. INA. So I'm going to include Nuix. I've listed all, I've, I've written down all the breakouts, but I've not included all these companies in this particular watch list. So let's have a look at Nuix. No, that's the wrong company. In fact, what I'll do is there. So Nuix is again very similar than Service Stream. So it's not a true breakout. In fact, the real breakout for this company happened uh, over a year ago in late July, early August of 2023, when the share price was below $1. I took a train position in this company on that breakout. Here it is. There it is. Barely, barely noticeable. There was potential breakouts before that, but this was a really good breakout. I'm pretty sure it was on the back of Good Financial News, 20th of July, and share price has been an uptrend since then. However, I took profits, and then I got back in uh, after I released some good, more good news on 20th of May. Share price on that day rose 25%, and you can see even though the share price rallied 25%, you sometimes not late to the party because I took a position at 294, and the share price is up 60% since then. So that's Nuix. And the other one was INA. Uh, this is Ingenia Communities. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's a potential breakout, but could be failing. So INA, I'll include that because I also want to include uh, breakouts that fail because there's a lot. Uh, breakouts that fail. A uh, good one is Jumbo Interactive. Not recently. I'm talking about in February. So I still remember uh, this one. Breaking out on the release of results in February and thinking, oh, should I take a position? It looked pretty good. About a week after that, share price got to a high of about 18.20. And then a fair bit of weakness after that. I probably would have sold out somewhere between April and June because the share price was doing nothing. No uptrend. And then lo and behold, the company released their results in February or August and the market didn't like it. So not all breakouts will succeed, but a lot of them do. And I've got Ansel here. Credit Corp. Um, so quite a few I've listed down here on my notebook, but I have not included in this particular watch list. So uh, I started this watch list yesterday. So that's why it's not complete. It's not inclusive. 
Okay, and that is all we'll have for this particular technical update video. If you have any questions, any thoughts, leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is uh, qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.